Hello. Hello, hello. lady. Hello, hello. Ooh, Amber, I like the hair. Looks good. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Not Melly in the kitchen washing the dishes. Okay, girl. I feel it. Uh, yes. I love it. Hello, ladies. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, Monique Renewed. Hello, Monique. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Morgan. I love those curls. Oh, thank you, guys. I went, I went natural tonight. I went as natural as I could. Had to go natural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even that's a word. No, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> but welcome, ladies. Welcome tonight. I'm so happy to have you guys. It is night three. Amen. So first off, I just want to tell you, when this call ends tonight, we're going to end it out together. Our fast is completed. But I also know there are some of you that are across the world. Some of you are in Africa or Australia. So, girl, y'all are like a day ahead of us. So, uh, y'all's is already done. Amen. So, I've been getting all y'all's messages and some of y'all's testimonies as well. So, I'm so grateful. But I know there are some on here who's already done with their fast. So, I'm so glad that we made it. And tonight, you guys, I just wanted to say this. Oh, man, this has been a challenge, okay? I don't know, if this has been a real sacrifice for you, then I want you to put in the comments that like, yeah, this has been a sacrifice because I feel like the word tonight is going to align to your sacrifice, amen? And so tonight I am so excited to pour into you and I ain't going to lie, y'all. I was just telling the HDC team while ago, your girl was running on some fumes though. Okay, y'all, we on day three and I know y'all are feeling it too. I know y'all are hungry, <laughs> I know some yeah. of you have been doing the partial fast too. And I know some yeah. of you want y'all real food as well. So we're not going to keep y'all long tonight. But we're going to keep you strong. Okay. We're going to really pour into you. And um, we're going to also, we every night we do one of these, it's called a poll. And so we're going to do a poll on your screen and we just want you to answer some of these questions for us. Okay. And I'm so happy to have you guys. Welcome. This has been such a sacrifice. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, good evening, ladies. So we are going to do the polls now. If you were here for the first two nights, like Morgan said, we've been doing these polls. So we have another one for you tonight. Um, and you should see it pop up on your screen right now. So we're going to give you guys a few minutes to go ahead and answer those questions. It's just six questions. Um, but if there is somebody who has like a quick testimony that would like to share, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Lisa, you have a testimony right now? Lisa, I see your hand is raised. Okay, hopefully she can hear me. But if not, um, Charm. Oh, wait, I saw her go on mute. Lisa, can you hear me? Okay, Charm, you can go ahead because I saw you next. Which, which Lisa are you referring to? I see the Lisa whose hand is raised. Okay, it's not me. Okay. At if the I top have my of hand the... raised and because I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I see Lisa. Not not you, the another Lisa. Is it Lisa? It's one S, but if it's Lisa. I oh, just see Lisa. I see Lisa L I S A at the top of the screen, but we can go okay. to Charm and then come back. Okay, hello everyone. Whew, glad to be here. Hope everybody's doing good. Sorry, I'm off camera. Um, and I know the scripture says don't look like you're fasting, but I look like it. <laughs> so um, I'm off camera today. Um, I just want to share a, a testimony that's not necessarily as conventional. I joined the fast a little late. The first day, I hadn't really participated at all, but I did see the devotions online. And then yesterday was a bit of a partial fast, and I was struggling super hard. And I felt um, so down about it that I did not make it through. And after the message yesterday, and I listened to the playback of the message from the first day, I positioned my heart and I said, Lord, just like with your prodigal son, it's not necessarily about what you went off and did in yesterday. God is just like, just come back. 
And so I made up in my mind that even though I did not start as strong, I'm going to finish strong. And not only did I fast today, I did a dry fast, no water, um, no food at all. And here we are at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm still here and I've made it. And I feel like even just in this last moment, um, I choose not to focus on condemnation. And I choose to lean into how gracious and how merciful our father is. And I just want to encourage the ladies on today for those who have tried and feel like they failed and those who have made it through. Uh, let yesterday be yesterday and let tomorrow have its own worries and move forward and be strong today because you can. So thank you so much, Morgan, to your moderators and to everybody on the fast. I love you all. And I'm, I'm just so grateful. Amen. Thank Ooh. you so much for sharing, Charm. That was really powerful because I know it was hard for a lot of us. And that dry fast is no joke. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, these I think I'm ready now. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. So I don't know. Is Morgan still on the call too? Yes, she's, she's still on the call. Okay. So I wanted to say for my testimony, um, I've been dealing with a lot of grief. My mom passed away January 22nd mm -hmm. and I was just angry with God. I was angry that he took her from me. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to do devotional. I didn't want to read the Bible. And um, I had just came through a 21 day fast that I did with her only. And I was praying for her healing. So I felt you know, discouraged and disappointed, but I always do Morgan's fast every year. And um, I struggled with it because I'm still, you know, I'm grieving and I'm angry, but I know that God loves me and he's going to protect me and he's going to heal me. I'm just going through a lot of emotions right now. So I was torn because I just did a 21 day fast, but I've been able to do the three day fast successfully and I'm trying to grieve and, you know, go through the motions right now. So it, it's been successful for me. I do feel a bit better, although I'm still grieving. So my question to Morgan too is, I know she's dealt with grief recently. Like I'm not, I'm upset with God, but I know that, you know, it was his, it's God's will. God is in control and, you know, she's in heaven now and she's with him. So that brings me comfort, but I, I've been doing good on this fast. And like I said, I just did a 21 day fast. Thank you for sharing, Lisa, and thank you so much for taking the time to do the fast despite what you were going through and your experiences. Um, my condolences for your mom um, and your loss. Um, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, but um, I'm thankful that you've made it and that you're still pushing just to seek God's face and to be there. I don't know if Morgan is. Yes, I'm here. Oh, which, okay. I heard her heard her question. And I real quick I wanted to say to you, um, I definitely can feel, you know, the the pain you feel. And I think while I felt when I was like listening, like, okay, God, what do I say? Cause I have been through a lot in 2023. I lost a lot of people actually. But um the biggest thing I can tell you about my experience, but I feel like the Lord said, Let me be your mother. Let me be your father. Let me be that for you. Let me be everything that she put poured inside of you and everything that she um, left behind for you that that parts of you that is her that's still going to be there but God's like now let me be that for you let me be the person you call and run to let me be that and I know with grief comes a, a heart and heart sometimes but the Lord says I can even deal with your heart and heart give me your heart and heart give me all of that and I think that's exactly what you're doing um, but I will say grief takes time so don't feel bad that it's been seven months or whatever and you still are crying at night grief takes time I lost a friend in beginning of May of last year and I will tell you it was still oh, I lost another one in June too but the one friend that I lost in May I was still grieving over him and right when I lost my other friend in December I was still grieving over the friend from May you know, and then still was adding to the grief from the friend from June. So I just will say, um, grit, grief takes time. It takes time. And your strength comes from the Lord. But grief does take time. So be easy on yourself. All right. Thank you so much, Morgan. Um, 
All right, you guys. So most of you have finished the poll already. So I'm going to hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the answers now. Okay. And thank you again, Lisa, for sharing. I'm cut you Lisa off. That, that um, raised your hand. We'll have some time later to hear some more testimonies. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just move on with um, what we have for the night. And I'm going to go over the poll right now. Um, thank you guys again. And again, we'll have more time later. So the first question is how is your fast going? And so most of you all actually said that it was going good. 65% said it was going good. Um, but then we still had some people that said like it was struggling, I was trying. And uh, just like Charm said, like, just keep going back at it. Just keep going. Cause it's about your intimacy with God. So Alicia, we don't made it. Yes. Can you share those results on the screen? Oh, wait. Yes, I can. Sorry. <laughs> can you see it now? Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. So number two now, what was your favorite tool in the fast? And 41% said the nightly prayer call. I agree. Okay. I lo have loved these nightly prayer calls instead of just the one on the third night. So I agree with you all. Um, and then some of you also said the fasting guide and the devotional playlist as well. And then number three, how would you sum up your fast? 45% made it all three days. Good job, ladies. 18% struggled through and 37% said God carried me. God, Because God carried us. Yes, he did. Number four, did you see a change in your faith? 77% uh, said yes. That is awesome. That's what we want to see. And then number five, do you have a testimony? 38% said yes. And 66% said not yet. For those of you that said not yet, if you listen to the devotional today that Morgan had, it was really good because... God still has something for you. He will come at the time that it's going to come. You're still going to get your answer. And so don't feel like you're counted out yet just because you haven't gotten what you are seeking just yet. Um, six, are you ready to eat? I'm so ready. And girl, I'm ready to get back to living. All of us. Yes. So thank you guys again for answering those questions. Thank you guys again for being on here tonight with us. And so now we are next, we are now moving into the next part of our program. I'm so excited. I know that you all are too. Most of you all are here because you follow Morgan Tracy J. You know how powerful she is. You know how prophetic she is. And so she will be delivering our word for tonight. She is our speaker for this evening. And so if you are new to Morgan Tracy J, just know that she is an empowerment speaker, the founder of His Daughter's Closet. Um, she also shares weekly faith-based videos on YouTube, and she also has her blog on hisdaughterscloset.com. And she has her blogs that focus on faith, fashion, and fearlessness. Um, she has a reach of to over 90,000 win, women. And her ministry also has programs that reach youth programs, give back, give backs and initiatives. And like I said, you guys know, like she has a prophetic voice. She has a prophetic gifting and a powerful voice. And so I am very excited to hear the word that she has to share with us tonight. And so Morgan, Tracy J., Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, I'm so excited to finally get to minister. You know, these last three nights we've had a lineup and that was such a blessing. You know, I don't know if you were here for night one or watch it on the replay. 
Rebecca said, fight, girl, fight, because I believe she was speaking prophetically in what day two was getting ready to hold for us. I don't know about you guys, but day two was very challenging. Okay. Day two was hard. And so I believe that fight, girl, fight, but then also with Kay Nash talking about push and go and take your land. Amen. So I feel like the speakers of last night are really just leading us into the word of tonight, you guys. And I'm honestly, I'm so happy to share this message with you guys because God has been speaking to me about something lately. And I was so excited to share this, but I also was like getting away in the garden these last uh, three days. And I talked about that on night one, how God told me to go to the garden. And so as I've been going to that garden, God has been talking to me about some things. Amen. And so I really, I'm really excited to share, um, just share this message tonight. But first I got to say, you guys, for the Esther fast night three, first thing I got to say is congratulations. Congratulations, girl. Okay. And the reason I'm saying congratulations is because in Isaiah, which was the first scripture that you came across on your fast, it said, Isaiah 58, six, it is not this, the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free and to break every. Yoke. So I want to tell you, congratulations, girl. Congratulations. I know this is so, I know this fast was so challenging. I know it was something kind of overwhelming at times, but I want to say congratulations to you for getting through this. Because I have done fasting for years, and I want to tell you, there are some fasts, not every fast, but there are some fasts that mark you. And I believe this is a fast that marks you. Amen. All right. So let's get into this word. So the word that the Lord gave us here at His Daughter's Closet for 2024 was higher. I dropped this video on my YouTube channel. If you haven't watched it, when you get some time, go back and watch that prophetic word. But the word was higher. And he said, higher means greater than normal. Also in the, I think it's the Hebrew or the Greek, the Rabbah is the other word for it. And it means elevation, advancement, or a step up. So this is, I already talked to you guys about higher in this prophetic word, but this kind of aligns with tonight. All right. So actually I went to Dallas recently and I was, I, I randomly had to get into this hotel. They switched up my hotel last minute. They gave me something else and I was there to minister. But when I got to this, the top of my room, I could see all of Dallas. And I was like, wow, they just randomly gave, you know, they just switched everything up. And then I heard the Lord say, but didn't I already tell you higher? And so I'm standing and this is just a couple, like last weekend. And I see all of Dallas and I'm like, oh God, you don't just mean a, a spiritual higher. You don't just mean that, but you're talking about a physical higher too. All right. So tonight's word I want to tell you is higher hi her that's how god gave it to me he kind of gave it like he was waving that's why i have that hand waving at you guys but hi her because he said he is ushering you in to a new phase of life mm -mm -mm. before we get into this word you guys i want to pray real quick i just felt that i don't know i feel like some people got might some people might have to leave a little early tonight because i don't know what but i just felt like the lord was like go ahead and pray right now real fast <laughs> all right so before i drop this word on you i want to pray for you right now in jesus name Lord, today, we thank you so much for just bringing us to this place. We thank you for covering us in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, I pray over every single daughter under the sound of my voice. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will stir up the Holy Spirit inside of her, Father God, that the Holy Spirit in me will speak to the Holy Spirit in her. Right now, Lord, I pray that you will use my words and the meditation of my heart, Father God, and you will allow this to be dissected in such a way that it will bless each and every one of your daughters. I pray even the daughters that watch this later on on YouTube will still be blessed for weeks and months to come. Lord, right now, I'm speaking this word over your daughter that you are taking her higher so lord right now i pray that you will just use your woman servant you will use my words you will use what you've put on my heart but also lord you will bring yourself glory so today lord we thank you and we honor you in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen all right so the word is hi her hi her hi her because god is ushering you in into a new phase of life so the first thing is when god gave me this word i was like okay what's ushering? Like, I feel like an usher, you know, like is she an usher, you know, that's how we say it. But I was like, what's ushering. And when I did, started to do, you know, definitions and looking this up, the first thing the Lord said is ushering is the cause or the mark of starting something new. 
All right. It means it's a signal, it's an announce, or it's a give notice to. So if something is being ushered in, that means it's the start of something new, the mark, the signal, the announcement that you give notice to. And the Lord said, this fast was the signal to your life that you are coming into a new phase. This fast was the announcement to yourself and others around you that you are coming into a new phase. God said that this fast was giving the enemy notice that she, you are coming into a new phase, okay? The Lord said that he's ushering you in to a new phase, but ushering means that it's a signal, it's an announcement, and it gives notice to. So he says, I'm giving notice to the enemy that, hey, my daughter is finally coming into a new phase. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and announce it to her, but even the family and the people around her, because now there's an anointing that not is only gonna be for her, it's gonna flow through her, but it's she's coming into a new phase. The Lord said, I sent you a signal, daughter of God, that when you made it through this fast, that was the signal for you to realize that you have finally stepped into your new phase. Amen. So I want to tell you this right now. There is a part of this where he said, God said, I'm announcing to you and others that you are coming into your new phase. And I want to tell you this part where he said this. He said, the anointing is going to flow from you to others. He said, because you because you embarked on a fast, because you sacrificed, because you put yourself down, because you decreased so he could increase inside of you. Also, he had he has me telling you this story. There was a time when I did a 19 day water fast at the beginning of my journey of my faith, a 19 day water fast. It was the most challenging fast of my life. However, the Lord said that was the announcement that you were stepping into ministry. And I will tell you, after that fast, my life changed, okay? And that's why I do these Esther fasts because every time I fasted, I've seen a shift in my life. And God said that that was the same announcement that there are daughters right here getting that same announcement that there's going to be such a flow and anointing that's going to flow from you now. And it's not just for you. It's going to flow into others. We're sitting here tonight because I embarked on one fast almost seven, eight years ago. So God is saying this right now, make sure that you realize that there is an anointing that's going to flow for you and people are going to eat from that. People are going to eat from that. God is ushering you in. He is starting something new right now. So I need you to get this again in your spirit. This fast was the signal to yourself first to realize that you are coming into a new phase. First off, you even agreeing to take on the fast was an announcement to yourself and others that, oh, she has walked in to a new phase. Also, God says you making it through the fast was the announcement of you giving the enemy notice that, hey, she is coming into a new phase. Get your hands off of her, off of her stuff, off of her blessings off of her heart. Get your hands off of that because my daughter is coming into a new phase in the name of Jesus. All right. So as the Lord was speaking this word to me, he was like, he's ushering you in. He's ushering you in. He said, this fast was the mark of change for you. This fast was the mark of something new. This fast was the mark of a new you. And that's why I just shared that story about nine years ago, eight years ago, when I did my first fast, that was the mark of something new for me. And every time I have fasted since then, God has done a different thing in me, in my life, or in my ministry. I want to share this with you, girl. This fast was the mark. This fast was the mark. This fast was the mark. Amen. This fast was the mark. But I want to share this with you. This is what you guys saw, okay? When I was fat, every night on these prayer calls, you have seen me looking the part, looking good, you know, but I want to really tell you, I've been on here encouraging you, dressed up, happy, trying to, you know, be energetic for you guys and everything. But I will say, this is what you saw. And I'm so glad you did because scripture tells you to get up and wash your face and to act like if it was any other day when you're fasting. And so this is what you saw. So this is what I showed you guys this but this also is what you did not see you didn't see the brokenness you didn't see the struggling you didn't see the battle and the same thing is with me with you I didn't see your battle I didn't see you sacrificing and I will say this was one of the hardest fasts and I was telling my, my team about this that I've done in a long time and also as we were preparing this fast about a week before the Lord said yes it is a water fast but you're going to do a dry fast and I have never done a dry fast, you guys, if I'm honest. I have never done a dry fast. And I was like, well, God, um, you know, water is my safe place. Water is my comfortable place. I know how water fasts go. I know how to get through it. I, I'm, I'm used to this. This is, this is my normal, you know. So I'm like, okay, Lord, like you want me to do 
a water fast or a dry fast. And so I was already kind of been preparing my heart, my mind, but I will tell you, I struggled through this dry fast. I struggled mentally. I struggled in my body. I struggled just with obviously desiring water, even just wanting water. I've struggled through my dry fast. So I want to show you again, what I did show you was me showing up. But what I did not show you was the battles and the brokenness and the struggle. Okay. And I want to tell you this sacrifice leads to divine encounters. Okay. And I have noticed that over and over again in my ministry and over and over again in my life, sacrifice leads to divine encounters. All right. We're going somewhere here. Stay with me. Okay. So when God said, I'm ushering you into a new phase, we already got the definition of usher. He's ushering us in. He's signaling. He's, um, he's setting us. He's giving attention to, okay. We know what the signal is. We know what God is ushering. But then I said, okay, God, well, what is the phase? And he says, a phase is a series of events or a process of change to go from one state to another, a new chapter or a change in time. And as he was telling me this, he says, I'm ushering you in, I'm ushering you in into a new phase. So I'm giving the signal, I'm making the mark, I'm setting up the event that's going to process, change your process. And many times when you're inside of a business or something, they say, oh, we're starting a new phase in our business. That means we're starting up something new. Someone says, oh, I'm in a new phase of life. That means they're in a new chapter. They're in a new season, right? So I want to tell you right now, the Lord is saying, daughter, you just started a new chapter. You just turned another page. The story of the previous season is over. God said the season of the lack and the mourning and the grief and the pain and the failure and the heartbreak, that is last season's news. He says, I'm bringing you into a new phase. He said, it may be from going from one state to another. That might mean physically, but he said also that might be internally. You might go from the girl who was never confident to now you're going to a state where you're confident. You're going from the girl who's always afraid he says now you're going to a girl who's always going to be fearless now God says I'm taking you into a new phase of your life daughter he says just like some of you had a birthday where you hit a new chapter in your book you might have hit chapter 30 chapter 35 chapter 45 God says I'm taking you into a new phase just like that this new chapter is going to have a different name this new season's got another name for you God says I'm changing your phase daughter of God I'm changing your your chapter in the phase you've been in. If you've been in the phase of lack, you've been in the phase where, man, you've been struggling in your heart in the phase of a failure and, and falling short. God says, I'm changing your phase. I'm changing your phase. And as we were, God was like, you know, I'm ushering you in a new phase. And he brought me across Matthew 6, 6. And actually at this time, it's just kind of saying like, hey, there are people who pray outwardly they do it for the views of others they do all this he says but when you pray you go into your closet and you do it in secret then your father who sees what you've done in secret will reward you openly and this is what the lord speaks see i'm trying to tell you i kept let this whole week i kept hearing him say reward openly reward openly i was coming across some scripture reward openly and i kept writing that down like okay lord i had reward openly somewhere and what he says what you did in secret I will reward openly. What you did in secret, I will reward openly. You know how they say whatever's done in secret will come to the light, right? You know, they always say that. And God is saying the sacrifice you made in secret, I will reward openly. Now I know we're corporately fasting. So each of us know that we're fasting, but I'm sure there's other things about our fast. We did not share with people. I know there are probably some people you didn't tell them you were doing just water because they might've thought you were crazy. I know there were some people you didn't tell them that you were going dry fasting because they would have thought you were crazy. God says, what you did in secret, I will reward openly. Amen. And he says, I will reward you openly. There's going to be no, un no more undercover blessings, no more hidden breakthroughs, no more undercover anointing, no more. Maybe she's doing something or not. Man. No more confusion. God says all will see because I am rewarding you openly. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. And I got to break this down for you again. He said, this is a season of, this is a year of hire. But he also said, hi, her, because I'm ushering you into a new phase. This new phase, I am rewarding you openly. Mm, you guys, okay, we, we're getting somewhere. I feel it, okay. Ooh, in this new phase, 
I am rewarding you openly. So I'm ushering you and I'm signaling, I'm announcing, and I'm giving notice to the enemy. But not only that, in this new phase that you are going to come into, I am bringing a new chapter. Everything is going to be un uncovered. Nothing's going to be undercover anymore. Everything's uncovered. Those blessings that you've been praying for, uncovered. That anointing you got, uncovered. God said those gifts that have been hidden, uncovered. God said, I am rewarding you openly and everything that's been covered, I'm bringing the top off of. Amen. Amen. And he says, I will reward you openly for your sacrifice, daughter of God. And I want to share this with you. So I was in Dallas the last weekend, week and a half ago, and I was ministering at this event and it actually kind of fell together the way God needed it to, because it wasn't going to fall together. And this event was called the Esther project. And I was like, wow, that's kind of wild. Like I'm getting ready to walk into the Esther fast, but you know, this has already kind of been planned a while, a ways out. And when I was at this event, I was off there. Some, some of these girls are from his daughter's closet. Amen. And as I was at this event, though, God started speaking to me because he brought me to this event. Amen. I got to minister. I got to meet some beautiful women. But he real I realized he didn't bring me to this event for the reason I thought. I thought he was bringing me here to minister. Amen. And I'm glad I got to. But he also was bringing me here to give me a rubric. He was trying to give me a manual, give me an outline of what higher was, was looking next for me. So he sent me into this high rise hotel. Ooh. Let me find that picture. Okay, that picture is over there. Okay, he sent me into this high rise hotel, right? When I see this big higher view, he says, don't forget, I told you about higher. Don't forget that word. And then he sends me into this night where I'm ministering to women and he's showing me what's next. He's showing me at this live event, ministering to these women. He's showing me what's next. And I want to tell you this. Don't forget the word the, the Lord whispered to you. Because he gave it to me in December, the word for January. I dropped it in January and the month started going on by that I kind of wasn't really thinking about the word no more. And it wasn't until I was standing in the word. And Rebecca mentioned this night one, she said, I became the word. It wasn't until I was standing in the word that I remembered the word. So I want to tell you right now, do not forget the word that the Lord has spoke to you. Your word for 2024 may be different. Your word may be something specific. I don't know what it is, but don't forget the word the Lord gave you. He might have gave you a word about your gifts. He maybe gave you a word about an idea, whatever. Don't forget that word. Amen. And I want to tell you this. This happened today. I was um, at the house still, and I don't know how to pronounce her name correctly. It is Chali, Chayil Chanda. I hope I'm saying that right. Um. But she sent this testimony today. It says 1202. This was today. She said, the physical thing that I wrote in my journal that I wanted to receive as a result of my fast is the car of my dreams. Well, and she sent me the picture. She said, thank you so much for being led. led. There are some spiritual things I'm believing for too. But this was the only physical thing I prayed for. This was day two. She had a testimony. She shared it with me today. And I want to, to remember, daughter, don't forget higher. And God says, I will reward you openly for your sacrifice. I will reward you openly for your sacrifice. And I had to share hers because sometimes people can look at me and that's all they see. And she was someone actually here on our fast with us. Um, and she got her a car on day two. Amen. And I'm like, hey, man, I would have loved to get me a new car. I'm sure y'all would think the same, right? Um, we would all love that. But I want to tell you, God knows exactly what you need. And he knows when he wants to hand that into your lap, when he's going to place that in there. And I will say, there are some fasts when I've gotten done, I've had testimony after testimony. And there's some fasts when I've gotten done, I've been like, Gosh, everybody else got their testimony. When's mine coming, Lord? When is that breakthrough coming for my family? When's that breakthrough coming for my father? When is that breakthrough coming for my cousin? When is that coming? And you know what the Lord said? Hold on to my word. Because under the sun, there is every season. And just like here, we just walk through our fast. 
This was a season of sacrifice. We had to go through some days of sacrifice. We had to go through some days of sacrifice. But the Lord saying, I will reward you openly. And I have to share this with you right now. I feel him bringing this back again a little bit. The way he's showing it to me. Um, I'm trying to get the words because I see it, but I got to be able to verbalize what I see. Okay. Mm. But how he's, what he's showing me is like, there is so many of us that have had certain caps on us and certain things that we haven't truly allowed God to flow through. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm, okay. Okay. I see it, but I, I don't want to get emotional. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, it's beautiful. Okay. Let me tell you what I see. So there's a lot of us where he has been wanting to flow through us and pour out on us and pour out on us, but there's been all these things in the way. And some of us, it could have been our fathers. It could have been losing people that we truly loved. It could be the mindset that we have that, man, we're never going to get out of this hole. And he said, there's just been all this blockage. And he said, so I positioned you and I ushered you in to this fast. I put it on your heart. I just kept showing it. Even when you were scared, I kept ushering you in. Even when you thought you're not going to get through. Oh man, I shouldn't even be going forward with this fast. I'm so scared. How am I going to make it through all them days? God says, I kept ushering you in because I knew that this was going to be the mark that you needed. This was going to take the cap off so everything could now flow to you. And what God told me today when I was in the garden, he said, I'm flowing some things to I'm flowing some things to my daughters and what's going to happen now is now their children are going to be blessed because now you are set free mama your children can be a little more freer now you've got the awareness your children can have the awareness God said it's just going to flow like this but it's going to go outward instead of just staying with you he said I'm flowing it outward not only are you receiving blessings and anointing and opportunities and open doors he said because I'm rewarding you openly for the sacrifice you made he said but also it's going to go outward now you're going to see people around you get blessed only because of your anointing, only because of the sacrifices you made. I want to say this again, girl, this was a sacrifice. And the Lord, as I was out there tonight in the, or I was out there today in the garden, he said, tell my daughters about the anointing that's going to flow. There was anointing that's finally going to flow for them. And he said that it flows sometimes, but then it hides. It flows once in a while, then it goes back in. And he's like, no, it's going to flow. He's like, and I want you to know that you have been exactly where I needed you to be. Ooh, Rebecca said night one, you belong here. Rebecca, Rebecca said that. And I'm not telling you you were belonging in his daughter's closet. No, no, no. I mean, God is saying, the thing I put on your heart and the thing I've told you and the place I got, you belong here. I need you to work on that. I need you to keep working. You belong here. He, and also too, there's something that I had to do. I was out there in the garden and the Lord said, I need you to show them what happened in Isaiah 58, six, which I read that that's in the front of your by in the front of your fasting God Isaiah 58 and 6 he says I broke the yoke and he says I need you to show them and I was like oh I feel like I gotta break something Lord that's what I was out there in the garden today and he said okay so I went and broke this big old stick y'all there was a big old stick out there I broke it I stepped on it I broke it and I'm like that's what you did I know that's what you did for your daughters I know that's what you did for your daughters and he was like, now show them. So I brought a little stick, y'all, because I ain't that strong, okay? I ain't that strong. But the Lord said, I'm breaking things off of you. I'm breaking things off of you. And this fast was the mark of the breaking. And he says, and when those things that break off of you, they're no more. They're not in my sight anymore, daughter of God. Let them go. I don't remember those anymore, the things that I had to break off of you. And he said, and there are some trauma. You may be having dreams of past trauma. And he said, that is all the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to linger. He's trying to keep that peace connected to you. He said, you've been being attacked in your spirit. You've been attacked mentally. You've been attacked financially. You've even been attacked, attacked in the future. Like, God, are you even going to bring my future, my career, my purpose together? When are you going to do this? And he's like, hey, daughter of God, I've broke some things off of you. All right. I've already done it. Don't go back and grab that old thing. Don't go back and wallow in the same mud. I set you free from God is saying, I broke some things off of you because I need you to realize that it's done. It's done. He said, this fast was a mark of a new phase, daughter of God. And I want to share this with you right now. So powerful. I just want to share this with you.
Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. The biggest thing holding you back is you. And God says he needs you to remember that going forward. So if it's like you, you want to call that for that family member, but you're too nervous. If it's because you you want to mend that relationship, but you if you want to go for that dream, you want to. The biggest thing holding you back in life is you. God said, "Cause I broke it." He said, you, "You, I broke it. I broke it." And he said, "And if you don't believe me, read my word. Read my word. I said it in Isaiah fifty eight six. Is this not the fast I chose for you?" to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. I am just doing what I put in my word, daughter. That's all I'm doing. I'm doing exactly what I put in my word. So what I wanna tell you tonight, daughters of God, I know we have been fasting and I have been so emotional today because I guess this fast and and then, you know, I've never done a dry fast in my life before. And I felt very broken during this fast. And I know y'all probably couldn't tell when I got on, on camera and on here, but I felt very broken during this fast. And then God had to remind me that, remember in the beginning of your walk, Morgan, it was all, I must decrease so he can increase, you know, um, I hope they, uh, you know, see Jesus through me, see Jesus through me type of deal. And he said, I just had to get you down. I had to get you low again. I had to get you very low. And I want to tell somebody that today. Remember that everything pours out. Your ministry, your dreams, it all pours from your life and that walk with God. It does. So I want to tell you this right now. Amen to the decreasing. It was hard and it was overwhelming at times. And we probably all felt like at times we were not going to make it. Um, but amen to the decrease. Because now what you did is you gave him way more room. If you thought God came through before, you're going to see him come through on a different level. You thought God spoke to you before. He's speaking to you on different levels. You thought God confirmed things before. He's confirming things on other levels now. I want to tell you that. So I want to just give this real quick to you guys. And I, I obviously I love and adore you. And, and I'm so glad that we got to do this together. And I hope you felt connected to us and, and every girl in here. I hope you really felt that. But I don't want you to look, walk away faithless. Because maybe the girl who with the car got her testimony. And I know we're going to hear a lot more tonight as well. We're going to hear all these different testimonies tonight, but I don't want you to lose faith, daughter. Because what you sacrifice, God will reward openly. And I want to tell you this. I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. This fast broke me. It broke me. But anyways, um, um, and it tells us in scripture. After Jesus was done fasting. Angels came and ministered to him. And I was praying today in the garden. And the Lord said, angels have been sent out for my daughters. Angels will come and minister to them. Angels will come and help them. And it may not be the physical angel in the sky we're thinking about, girl. It literally could be an opportunity. It could be a family member. Finally, somebody is lending a helping hand. Somebody confirming something, somebody sending you a, a word that is confirmation to something you've been questioning. What should I do? God said, I have sent out angels. And that's why I say, y'all, it's all the word, Lord of mercy. We are literally living out his word right now in this fast because he said he will sustain us. He said, the word of God will be like honey. It will be like honey. That's what you will eat in your fast. And that's what we've been eating. So sorry, y'all, if y'all have not been on some of these lives in a while, YouTube, I can edit out these pauses. But um, if you've if you've been on my lives, you know, I pause because I'm listening. I get to edit it out on YouTube, though, but I pause a lot. Um,
And I also just like, I'm thinking, cause he's like here, I'm hearing things from the garden again. And I'm like, oh, I kind of forgot about that. But anyways, um, um, but he, he also said like, there is more I have for you. And I feel like the Lord is speaking specifically, um, to some, to some people on this one. He said, and I don't know if this is for everyone, but I think you're going to know specifically if this is for you. The Lord is saying there's more I have for you. Mm. And maybe your mama or a close family member or someone really close kind of challenges you and makes you feel like there is no more for you. Maybe they make you feel like there isn't more you can even achieve. Mm. And he's saying that I, there's more I have for you. But sometimes your atmosphere can make you feel like he ain't got no more for you. And God said, now, daughter, there's a reason I have you there, though. I need you to change that atmosphere. Mm. Okay, let me say, oh, okay, Lord, I hear you. All right, I got to share this. This is for somebody. I don't know what this is about, but this is for somebody. Uh so I've been looking to buy a home in this area for a while now. I've been looking and I have not had the luxury of finding something, but my family have been sending me all these homes for the last six months. All right. Like, this is a good home. This is a good home. And every time I've looked at it, I've been like, that ain't really me. That ain't me. Right. And it would be all these things. And I remember one day there was this one home where I know my family were like, oh yeah, girl, get this one, get this one. And you know, you just don't like, this is not me. This is what y'all want for me, but this ain't me. Right. And I feel like God is saying that to somebody today, that there are people around you that kind of want what, what you, what, what they want for you. And you kind of know that ain't what you want, but you like, well, I mean, if everybody else is saying that, it, and God is saying, daughter of God, rise up. Oh, Esther's rise up inner courage, inner faith, rise up because you can't go with what everybody tells you to go. I think this is best for you. Oh, I think this is best for you. And God says, but I know what is best for you. And you may have to go against the grain for a season. You may have to go against them for a season. They might not understand why did she pick this over this? Why did she choose to stay in this situation longer? Because it was hard. Why did she choose that? Why, why, why? God is like, follow me, daughter. Follow me. And I want to say this again to somebody. And I feel like the Lord needed me to share that story because I mean, to me, it was just something I went through. I would have, you know, but I feel like he's saying that your atmosphere sometimes is starting to make you grab a hold of things that I said that, Hey, I got better for you. He said, some of you even went out and, and there's an opportunity. You're like, uh. He's like, Hey, you know, I had better for you than that. You know, I got better for you than that. Amen. So I want to tell you this right now. Um, I don't know who that was for, but that's what I said. I feel it was very specific. <laughs> um, I feel like it was super specific. Um, so I just really pray that whoever's in your atmosphere, if you feel like, you know, they mean love and they mean it well, but if you know, this ain't what God told me. Mm, oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know who this is for y'all. Okay. There's a story. Okay. KK brought it back. I remember um, I was living at home. My ministry was about a year old. There wasn't even probably a hundred ladies in his daughter's closet at the time. And my brother came in. My brother's a doctor now, amen. But he's very school. He's very by the book. And I kind of followed his footsteps. My goal was to become a physical therapist, all that. But then I got saved. God took my life another way. So he, I fell out of college at this time. I'm back at home. I'm building this ministry. Not even a hundred ladies in it. I'm, pretty, I'm trying, you know, I'm believing God. My brother comes in and he said, Morgan, this is just a hobby. This is a hobby and you need to get out there and you need to, and he starts telling me, he's like, you, you need to finish your bachelor's in biology. You need to go be that physical therapist. You like, he started drilling me. And you know what? I remember I took that and I was like, oh, it, it, it might just be a hobby. Like maybe this is just the thing I do on the side and go just work my career, go back to school, become a physical therapist and do what my original plan was. And I know my brother, he meant well because he's by the book. I mean, he's a doctor today. So he meant well. He's seen that for me, but that was not God's plan for me. And so I remember I walked back into my old high school bedroom, no money, I'm living at my parents' house, failed out of college. And I sat down and the Lord said, get back to work. And I got back to work. And I want to tell somebody that today, there may be somebody around you calling your purpose a hobby. Don't let them. 
There may be someone around you talking about your dreams and your idea is just this little bitty thing on the side. Don't let them. Somebody around you is just saying, girl, you got to, this, 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 your, your head is in the clouds. Quit thinking like this. Quit thinking like, quit dreaming. Don't let them talk you down. And even to this day, you know what? This was about in November, my brother, because I had a new office, he came to my office and we were sitting in here and we were really talking and we were talking back and forth. And you know what he said? He was like, I guess it wasn't a hobby. I said, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't, but I knew it wasn't. I knew the Lord, the Lord told me. So I want to tell you today. And my brother never made it to my other office because it was really far and he was in school at the time still. But now that he was out of school, he was home, sat in our office. He said, I guess it wasn't a hobby. I was like, it never was a hobby. It was me. It was my purpose. And so I want to tell you this today. Girl, don't let nobody talk you down. Don't let nobody talk you down. Don't let nobody talk you down off that wall. Don't let nobody stop the great work that God is doing within you. And I want to tell you also, Last but not least, before I finish this out, if there's just any, I'm like, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching. I'm like, Holy Spirit, tell, tell me something. Like, but if there is anything I can leave you with tonight for your fast, which we're going to get into some testimonies in a minute and let people share that. But if there's anything I can leave with you tonight. We based this fast off of the book of Esther because she was an orphan and she was a queen and, and we see her do a three-day fast, which was a dry fast, but we add water and God still honors whichever type of fast you do, as long as you're sacrificing. He honors that. We, I pick, we picked the book of Esther and I believe the Lord picked the book of Esther to show us that he may not always be straight up in your face, but he is in the details. But not only did he do that, I believe that the Lord said, Esther went from this young, quiet, kind of probably orphan, fragile girl to stepping up and being the woman she was called to be. And I believe that that's exactly why he calls us to fast. And I believe that's exactly why he calls us to do this specific fast, because he's wanting you to rise up and be the woman that he's been calling you to be. And you know what? I feel so strongly for you, Ashley Stretter, Stretter. Stretcher. I hope I saying that right. I feel just so strongly for you. Like God is like, I'm calling you up. Because as I was speaking, I just kept looking at you, kept looking at you. He's like, I'm calling you to be the woman that you are called to be. And the ideas and the dream that I put in your eyed heart and I, in your heart, your head, he's like, it's a, it's a head and heart thing with you for some reason. It's like, it's in your heart, but then the head is like over, 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 overdoes it. And he's like, it's a head and heart thing with you. And he's like, you know what, daughter, if I put it here, let it flow. He's like, but it's like, once I put it in your heart and you know, but then when it gets to your head. He says, then everything you've been through and things people said to you, and even just maybe how you felt about yourself or what people spoke over you, it just kind of, it tries to battle that out. But he's also saying, women rise up, Esther's rise up, rise up into your courage and your boldness. There is something you have inside of you. It may be at your local job. It may be with your grandchildren. It may be with your children, but God is like, rise up. I got more for you. And so I want to finish this out in prayer and then we will, um, let me see what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to finish this out in prayer real quick. Take a, take a, take a step away and then we'll come back for testimonies. But I want to tell you this girl, congratulations. You finished your Esther fast. And by the time we end up this call, hopefully everyone is moving and grooving on their fast and, and, and getting off of their fast. But I am so proud of you. We are going to end this call probably within the next 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm so proud of you for making it this far. If this was your first fast, I want to tell you congratulations, girl. But also if you have been fasting multiple times with us or even with other your churches, local church or whatever, I want to tell you congratulations. A fast is a true sacrifice. And so I believe that whatever you sacrifice in secret, God will reward openly. I've seen him do it. So I want to pray for you ladies right now. Actually, I want to stand up a little bit too. Let's see. I'm not going to lie, bro. Here, okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get a little a little different real quick. My, my mic. I feel it. I'm going to pray for you really fast. Let me make sure. 
MacBook. Okay. Yeah. I didn't do my mic. All right. I want to pray for you really quick. And I'm a prayer. I'm the type of prayer girl where I walk around. Okay. I don't know about y'all, but I'll be moving. Okay. So I knew like, Lord, we ain't gonna be able to just sit and do a prayer like that. But I want to pray for you as this, we come into the close of this three day fast. I want to pray for you and I want to just cover you right now. So in the name of Jesus, in Jesus mighty name, Lord, mm, mm, mm. in Jesus mighty name, Lord, Right now, Lord, I lift up every single one of your daughters right now, Jesus. And I want to first say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for seeing her through. Thank you for divine strength. Thank you for a divine glory. Thank you for a divine purpose. Thank you for a divine covering over these last days. God, I believe there was even some daughters that got through spiritual warfare quickly. Thank you for that divine move of God. Thank you for that divine struggle, God, that as she struggled in her faith, as she struggled in her body, God, you were there for her. Thank you, Lord, for your divine divineness and your goodness. Also, Lord, I want to thank you for the testimonies that have already been delivered, but also the testimonies that are getting ready to come. I want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for your goodness and your love and your covering right now in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray right now that you will cover your daughter right where she is, wherever room, whatever her apartment, wherever she is, Father God, cover her. But also, Lord, listen to the needs of your daughter. Please, Lord, we ask right now, Holy Spirit, that our sacrifice was beautiful in your sight and that you will bring a reward openly. For Lord, right now, we pray that you will move on our behalf. Jesus, we're pulling on your garment. We are pulling on heaven's resources. And we're saying, Lord, there are some of us that need you to come through financially. There are some of us that need you to come through with a new particular car because our car is not running the same. There are some of us that need you to come through and cover a certain bill for us. So there's, some of us need you to come through for a school bill. Some of us need you to come through with a new, better job, Father God. We're praying right now, Lord, that you will bring your divine resources over us. Us. Also, Lord, right now, we honor you in this fast, and we ask that you will move on our behalves in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, right now, we ask that you will move on our behalf in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, in Jesus' name, we speak life back over ourselves right now, Lord. I speak life over your daughters. Father God, right now, I speak love back over your daughters, a heart to love again, a heart to have life again, Father God, a heart to breathe again and have hope, Father. I believe right now, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit on your daughters in a new way. I believe, Lord, that the day ain't over yet and you still are got some pouring out to do in the name of Jesus. I believe, God, that even the days and weeks to come, your daughter will see the manifestations of the fast that she did. I pray, Father God, that she will see more manifestations than she's seen in her life, Father, that you will start showing up in different areas. I pray, Father, you will send confirmation, that you will send angels to minister to your daughter in the need, the daughters that are struggling in grief, the daughters that are struggling mentally, Father God. I'm praying right now that you have broken the yoke off of them, Father. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that the yoke is broken off of your daughters, that you break the very chains that have been keeping her locked down, thinking she can't move forward, thinking she's stuck. I'm coming right now against the lie of the enemy saying that you are stuck and you can't go forward. God, right now I'm praying that you break the shackles off of her mind and off of her body and off of her feelings and her emotions that are trying to be wired a certain way. Father God, we're praying for a new reprogramming. I'm praying that this fast got us in a new program, that it rejuvenated some things, that it revived some areas of us that have lost passion and hope, Father. I'm praying right now God, that you are bringing a double fold. You're allowing her cup to run it over. I'm praying she will experience a new level of joy, that she will be just smiling and laughing, Father God, that she will have joy again in the name of Jesus. I'm praying this over your daughter in Jesus' name right now, Lord. I lift up every single woman under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray you keep them. You be close to them. You protect them. I pray, Lord, you protect them from every form of harm. You keep it all away from them, even if it's close or far away, Father. Keep it far. I also, Lord, I pray you put a protection, a hedge of protection around themselves, around their home. Father, I pray a hedge of protection around their mind, Father God. I pray you will cover them and you will be with them and you will protect them and that they will honor you and they will serve you all the days of their lives. So, Lord, tonight, I pray you put a holy zeal in us. You stir up a holy fire in us. And, Lord, I pray that your esters rise up. 
that they rise up in your glory. They rise up in courage. They find that inner strength, that inner faith, that inner purpose, and they rise up into the women that you have called them to be. So Lord, today we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Morgan. That was so powerful. Amen. Thank you, guys. I see everybody putting amen in the chat. That was so encouraging. So um, while Morgan takes a little break, um, I see some of you all have started to raise your hand. We are going to start to take uh, testimonies um, in a moment. Um, we're going to put into the chat shortly. Um, if you want Morgan's Esther devotional, so to whether you got it this time or you can use it for your next fast or just read it as a devotional, um, it's very powerful. And then we also have a free three-day trial for her membership, the Social University. So you can also join that tonight. So your first three days are free. Um, and they put the links in the chat. Thank you all for doing that. So you can go ahead and follow those links um, to get access to both of those products. She said a few things and there were some things that she said that for were even things that God had revealed to me personally. Um, so even like when she said, all will see something that God had showed me um, during my fast, he was like, don't be afraid to be seen. So like God is going to elevate some of you all, like don't be afraid to be seen. I'm sure that's not just a word for me, but like when he's showing you off, when he's blessing you, like don't be afraid of how God is going to bless you. So when she said that, it reminded me of that also. And then another thing when she was going back to Esther, because you know, we were reading the book of Esther. One of the things that stood out to me in today's reading um, in chapter nine, verse 29 was when it got to, uh, it says, Queen Esther, daughter of Abihail, along with Mordecai the Jew, wrote this second letter with full authority to confirm the letter about Purim. And that part stood out to me so much that just that full authority of just walking in that. So like, so another thing God said to me was like, everything has already been revealed to you. Like everything you're asking me for, I've already given it to you. I've already shown it to you. I've already shown you who you are. It's just about walking in it. And so even when Morgan was like, it's, it's the high her, it's the higher self. It's, it's you fully walking in what God has for you in this season. We got to take full authority to really claim that, Right. And so that was really powerful. And again, that was something that God revealed to me in my personal time and really gave me clarity about some things that I have been asking for. And so that was just, I love that. And just like the other messages we listened to this earlier this week, I feel like I'm gonna have to go back and watch that message, message again. So thank you again for that, Morgan. Um, are we ready? And again, Again, we are going to start taking testimonies. Um, I guess we can go ahead and start. And then if Morgan would like to chime in, um, I see Ellen McKay. Ellen McKay. Hi. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hey, Morgan. Um, I am so grateful. Hi. Sorry, I'm so late. Hi. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. I just wanted to acknowledge you and everybody in the room and just say hello. Um, I'm so grateful for just this fast. This is the second time I've done it. And this time around, I do really feel like God is breaking the yoke in my life. So um, today I was just thinking about some things. Um, so oh, I'm so nervous, but I just want to encourage the ladies on this call, you know. Oh my goodness. So I admitted to God that you know what? I've been jealous, I've been envious, 
I've been bitter. And I feel like me doing that, God has been breaking that off of me. And I can tell because today I started having thoughts of like, wanting to love on those that I feel like didn't love on me like oh my goodness so currently I'm preparing for a new job position that God blessed me with y'all like oh my goodness it's new it's just for me y'all and I'm in the middle of preparing for it I have to take an exam for it and today I was just thinking about like when I start to get the money coming in I, I want to bless those around me and all these different ways. And after doing that, I feel like God was basically telling me in a way like my heart posture has changed. Instead of me like holding back love, I'm now allowing love to flow. Um, and that's something that I was praying to God about. Like, I don't want to block his flow in my life. I don't want to block I just don't want to block anything good that he has for me. Um, and up today, I just really feel like it's happened. Like he's breaking that yoke because of me fasting. And also too, y'all, this is the first thing I wanted to share. And it was, okay, so yesterday I had this thought about my birthday, which is coming up. And I, I don't mean to be long-winded. I'm going to be done after this. But I had this random thought about my birthday. Like, oh, what am I going to eat? Because <laughs> I want to eat good. But, you know, I'm having to wait, you know, to start my new job. So I have to wait to eat what I want to eat. And... I just thought about me having a seafood boil with just like the eggs and potatoes and corn. And y'all, tell me why today I got a call um, asking about, asking me, or the person on the other end of the call was asking me, um, what did I want to eat from this seafood place? And I'm like, oh my God, like, I felt like that's a testimony that I want to share. Like something just as simple as that. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just shows me that God is so good and he cares. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyways. No, that's thank awesome. you so much for sharing that. Amen. But see, you you watch God come through in the little things now. So you know he can come through in the big things. You watched him come through with like the food you want to eat. Like you, you've seen it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So yes, thank you, Morgan, and no God problem. bless all of y'all. No problem, no problem. Um, we're gonna go ahead and Jody Hampton. Oh, I think you're still. I think you're still muted. Yeah. Hello. Oh, Sorry. No, you're Hi. Fine. Hi. So I am in Australia. Oh, wow. and... welcome, welcome. So you're a day ahead. It's I, yeah, I'm, um, it's, it's been so, it was really funny because my, um, it's, it's great to come on Morgan. I've been watching you for ages and following you and, and it's just great to like, I've even seen your growth mm -hmm. and in my journey and it's, I'm just honored to be on here. Um, so my phone broke and wet when we were doing baptisms and then I, got a new phone, but my email wasn't working. But then the only email that came through was your thing for the Esther fast. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was funny because my heart, so recently in December, I was commissioned out of uh, a place called Tasmania here in Australia by the Indigenous pastors as a prophet of the nation. Mm. And that same pastor has asked me to travel with him doing a deliverance ministry. Oh, now, hey, Lord, really? Yeah. And like the Lord has called me to Aboriginal slaughter grounds and massacre sites, but I never know what it is till I get there. Cause I meet him in the garden and I meet mm. him near a water. And, and like I said, you know, Oh, I only want to do what you called me to do Lord. Mm. And my thing is interceding for my country. Amen. And I thought, you know what, I'm Lord, I'm I want to do this if it's from you. And I had this desire to fast, and I thought, 
every fast, every season, like there's a fast for everything that we do, a certain fast. And I was like, what season and what what time, aligned time are we in? And then it's Purim, like the time of the time of the Esther fast. And I was like, yeah. And then I got your I got your email and I thought, how great. And um, yeah, so that has been a confirmation for me to come to to join and it's just been really empowering to come along with all the women on the call to receive the daily devotionals and to really build up and I feel I just feel this great thing that that God is doing and he wants to deliver this nation and I believe something's mm. going to happen when the first nations people of the world arise and the women there's something about the women I had this mm. word and it was the women shall encompass the men and that's us coming around them as as we come around and we pray that they will be lifted up mm. like when in in the time when when Moses when they prayed you know they they cried out they wailed and they cried out and God sent a deliverer which was Moses and yeah, I'm just thank you so much for for me to be able to come on, link in with you guys and it's yeah, thank you. No, thank you so much for being a part and thank you for sharing your testimony, girl. That is awesome. Cannot yeah. wait to see all the deliverance that you do over there. Amen. So Lord, just, so, and thank you for going along on this journey with us. I know you're a day ahead, but uh thank yeah. you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Tatiana. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey y'all. Hey, how are you? You said my name right too. Ooh. Oh, amen. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm kind of nervous, but okay, I got you. we got you. What we've been hearing throughout this um three days is just to to get up, be seen, and don't be afraid to be looked at, to be heard. And so yeah. Um, so my testimony that I received during this fast was just obedience. And I feel like just in receiving the obedience, doors will be open through that. So I didn't have really a specific um, thing that I wanted from God. There is things that I do desire and that I do want. I just moved 18 hours from my hometown. And I'm in the process of looking for a job and things like that and getting back on my feet. That's been rough. That's been tough. And so, Mm -hmm. of course, there's things that I desire and that I need. And there's things that's going on with my family that they're in prayer for. And so Mm -hmm. I feel like just being in obedience alone, those doors will open. Mm -hmm. And so over the past two nights of what we've been hearing from Rebecca and and Nash, those words have been encouragement. And then the word that you spoke tonight was a word of confirmation. And so God, last year I've been battling with just, I'm still trying to learn what spiritual warfare is. I feel like spiritual warfare is when you're being attacked, when Mm -hmm. you're under attack spiritually. And so that's what I've been struggling with. Um, I grew up in an old strict Baptist home. And so as I got older, I strayed away from that. And I've been battling between living a life of sin or living of the world and going to God, living a God and tapping back into where mm-hmm. I come from. Mm-hmm. And last year, it literally felt like my mind was splitting. It was like God was calling me, but the enemy still had his hand on me. Yeah. And so I finally feel like I'm in a year of breakthrough. And I kept hearing God saying trans- transformation. And I was reading Matthew and when he went up to the mountain and he transfigured, I was like, God, this is my year of transformation. And when y'all kept speaking, this is your year, this is your season. When Rebecca said, this is your season. And not only is this your season, it's your time. God is calling you. God is wanting you. And you got to get rid of that blockage so you can receive what God is accent of you and when you said blockage I said girl if that was not a word because I I went to the garden and my garden right now looks like um it's this little trail that I walk and it is so beautiful it's full of like a little river with birds and everybody walking around it's so beautiful and I go out there and I bible read and just get intentional time with God Mm 
but I was praying and in your um, devotion, I think from day two, you were talking about fatherless daughters and how we're treating God out of that father wound. I'm sorry, y'all, I am long-winded, but how you were, how we were treating God out of that father wound and how we even had to heal, heal the uh, father wound that we might have. Mm -hmm. And it came to me, it was like, TT, it's a blockage in your life. As I was watching the wind blow, as I was watching the ripples in the water, I'm like, it's a dam somewhere. There's things God can't get to the to the other end because it's a blockage and you have to Come tend on. to that blockage. But you so, know what though? That's exactly why you fast. Yeah. Cause sometimes we don't know what the blockage is. Mm. We true sometimes like there we are truly sometimes blind to it. We might think our blockage is our mentality when really yeah. it might be one traumatic event that blocked you. Yes. You know what I mean? And so yes. many times we don't know what our blockage is, but that's why we fast. Because what fasting does, it says, you ain't got to know. I'm still going to get it. And when I get it, then you're going to realize what it was. But yeah. like, that's what fasting does. That's what says it breaks your yoke. It breaks off wickedness. And sometimes people have done wicked things to us or we've yes. encountered wickedness and it, and it, and it changes us and it hits us in the soul. It hits us in the heart. And so now we have a blockage. And so when God is trying to bring some good things, the wickedness is snatching it out, you know? And okay. so um, that's the whole reason why we fast because it's not by our works. All we do is push the plate away. All we do is say, Lord, here I am. I have nothing, but here I am. And he's like, perfect. Now let me show you what's been in the way. What's the block? Let me take care of it too. Yes, you know? exactly. Man, well, amen, girl. I think that was a testimony in itself. It's girl, like the Lord built it. you up. I ain't gonna lie. It just sound like the Lord built you up. Like the whole time you were talking, I'm like, it sounds like God built up a woman mm. in her. He built up a woman in her, yes. you know? Um, so amen, girl. I'm so proud of you. And thank you so much for going on this journey and sharing your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have um, Shanae. And hold on one second, Shanae. Um, everybody, I want to let you know that you will get an email tomorrow that is just asking for you to share your testimony with us. And they'll have a link and all that of a survey. I've seen those questions popping up in there, but you will get that email tomorrow that is just asking you to share your, your if you don't get, if you don't want to share it on here, um, you can share it there too. All right. But go ahead, Shanae. Sorry. Okay. Hi, Morgan. Hi, lady. Hi. This is my second fast with you. Um, I Amen. did the, um, the Esther fast last year and my heart just started beating so fast, but um just like a lot of other women said, um, like for me, this was breakthrough. And a lot of the things that were spoken um, throughout the the these calls was just confirmation for me. Um, and like, not that I put you on a pedestal, but I watch you all the time. And every time I come into the, these Zooms, I feel the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I just get so full where I'm like I can't say anything I just I can just cry mm -hmm. and so the things that you spoke today was confirmation for me because I have been doing things something that people around me are like this is so good for you keep doing it keep going don't don't stop and God told me I just told my sister on Sunday God told me I have something better for you I'm God you know, this, this is not it for you. This is not the only opportunity. And another thing is I w I'm still in the Daniel fast as well. I'll, I'll be done uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've always been a quiet, I'm 5'11", I'm tall. I like to wear colors, but I like to be not seen. And mm -hmm. on Sunday I went to my friend's church and I, kept telling God, Lord, I feel like I'm not doing this fast right because I feel like in my life, I want everything to be cookie cutter. And God always tells me I'm God, right? So I didn't want to ask him for anything. I don't want to keep going up for the same thing. So the pastor did altar call. I didn't want to go up, but I always go up. I'm that person. I want to make sure I'm okay with God. Come on. And he came over and I'm sitting there. I'm in worship with my eyes closed and he grabbed my hand and he said, the Lord is, is um, freeing you from the hurt, the shame, the guilt, the I wrote all these things down the um, the unforgiveness mm -hmm. and then the pastor's wife spoke in, in tongue and I understand that tongue cannot be it, it shouldn't go forth unless it ha has interpretation mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sitting in my seat and she pointed me out and she goes 
put your Bible to the side, lift your hands up, stand up and reach, keep reaching and stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down. And as I was doing that, I was just praising the Lord and I was just crying. And she said, the Lord is breaking these things off of you. Mm. And when you said today that, like, um, I took notes, Mm -hmm. but when you said today, um, anyway, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, but I don't know. Like when you said things are going to fall off, the yokes are going to be broken. Chains are going to be broken. I believe that over my life. And mm-hmm. I know that the Lord has so much for me and my family. They don't see me the way God sees me and they know my past mm-hmm. and they don't accept the God in me. Come and on. I never let that stop me, you know, because I know what God tells me. And I, I know that I talk to him and I know that he confirms his word for me all the time. On. And on Thursday, we had a singles prayer meeting and I used to cry like, Lord, why do people treat you this way? Why don't people worship you? Why don't, why do people go on Sundays and do whatever they want to do? And you give them everything that they want, that they need. And I invited people to the singles prayer and three of the guys that I invited showed up. The, the girls didn't show up, but I am really wanting more men in the church. My little brother, who's 27, he's had a hard life. He's lost his father. Mm-hmm. He's been shot. He said, he said, nay, I want to go to church. Mm. And I said, praise God, you know, but Thank that's you. all I want to do. Like, Thank I just want to live for the Lord. I want my life to to speak for what it is yeah, I don't want yeah. people to say Shanae is this way with me and that way with me and that way I want to be one way Amen. and I thank you every day for your sacrifice and your obedience and just showing us the the good the bad the ugly those pictures that you showed us we don't want to be seen like that I know I don't mm-hmm. but that's <laughs> the sacrifice you know so mm-hmm. thank you ladies and I'm so happy God didn't make me cry didn't allow no. me to cry because I'm a crybaby no, but I love amen. y'all so much. I love your testimony, but it sounds like, girl, you're not going to let no one get in the way of what God told you to do. And you yeah. you know when God has better. So, amen. amen. I feel like I feel like your testimony is already beautiful, but I can't wait to see what more he does, you know? So, yes. All right, thank you, ladies. Thank you. 244 thank you. of us coming together for God. I love it. Come on now. Amen. Amaya. Go right ahead. And real quick, Amaya, go ahead and unmute yourself. I want to say this, ladies, at 7.30, we're going to, and it's six, it's 7.30 Central Standard Time. So I don't know what time, maybe your time, but we're going to end that. And that's probably, we're going to end out in prayer and we're going to end our fast together. So if you are somebody who wants to um, go after that, you can, well, I'll still stay on the line a little longer. If you have some testimonies you would like to share, but just want to let you guys know that. Okay. 7.30 in less than 10 minutes, we're going to end out in some prayer together and we're going to end out our fast. Okay. Amen. All right, Amaya, go ahead. Okay. Hello everyone. Hello. I'm Amaya. Um, I'm grateful for this fast. Thank you, Morgan, for doing this fast. Um, oh, thank you. At the end of last year, I told myself I wanted to get more disciplined and just fast. And so I, I gave myself a challenge. I said I was going to fast every month of the year. So the first um January I did the first three days and I was going to do the same thing this month but then I saw that you were fasting with the extra fast and I did it last year also and it just it brought a lot of clarity to me so I said I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do it again Mm -hmm. and it's just been it's been very beneficial um something I struggle with a lot I just I came to Christ at the end of 2022 like for real the real thing Mm -hmm. and 20 last year I struggled with identity a lot like it was it was I just didn't know who I was fully so last year I said it was, it was personal for me because I really wanted to know who I was. And I found myself struggling a little bit, like, you know, just a little bit this year with identity too. But I feel like this year I knew who I was, but I had, I had to choose to believe it and walk like in who I am and who God uh-huh. created me to be. So I feel like this fast, like has really helped me like break off the doubt and break off um just the doubt and fear of, because I feel like I do have a, a kind of a fear or I had a fear of truly walking in who God called me to be Mm -hmm. but it's like it's no point for me to be afraid like God is with me and I always um quote the scripture um Esther 4 is we were born for just a time is this this scripture 
and mm -hmm. they been sticking with me a lot. So I would say that this fast really broke off on, you know, just the the waver wavering in my identity. And I had watched the replay with um Rebecca because I couldn't get on that day. Mm -hmm. But she has said stability and firm foundation is knowing who I am in Christ. So today actually is my birthday. I turned <gasps> Amen. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So um I, I did a birthday um post and I just said um I just have companies knowing who I am and knowing whose I am. So it's a totally different from last year because last year I was on a journey of trying to find who I am and I feel mm -hmm. like I really understand now or I'm get, getting more of an understanding of who I am, but I know I am god's daughter so amen amen well amen amaya i think this is a beautiful way to start your birthday and also shout out to your new chapter amen i don't know what how old are you 25 a amen well shout out to chapter 25 thank it's, you. it's whatever you create it to be amen amen well thank you for being on here thank you so much um the next one we have is i hope i'm going to say it zion man right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. It's Zion. Zion. Hi. Hi. So I just wanted to share a testimony. Um, I'm 21 years old and I graduate this May from college and my undergrad. And the reason why I tell you that is because when I first encountered God, I was 18. And so if you, if the women on this call know being a young woman in Christ, it's a bit of a challenge, especially when you think differently from your peers, you move Come on. differently from from your peers so it's, it, it it can feel very isolating and so I just want to thank God for this fast because I, I've truly gained my confidence and I've come to a place where I can say that I'm loving myself more mm -hmm. and trusting God because that was a challenge for me before and the fast that we did last August that's when God told me to leave from my, my job that I wasn't being acknowledged. I wasn't being appreciated. And then that was a big leap for me because I realized that I was depending more on my finances than I was with God. And mm -hmm. so just taking that leap after that fast to be like, trust you, God. I'm going to trust that. Is, and I'm blessed to say that with this new fast that I've been blessed financially. Mm -hmm. And even though the, the physical blessing was amazing, the spiritual blessing way much more to me because I've gained that confidence. I gained that love that it wasn't something that could be attainable. I started Ooh, to learn yeah. forgiveness. And when you were saying about the start of something new, <laughs> I'm about to, well, I am young. And he kept repeating to me the high school musical song, like, it's the start of <laughs> something new. And it kept repeating in my head. And then when you put it in your slide, I thought about it. And it's because God was just preparing me like Zion you're going to take and you're going to a new level. And I was praying in my room and I was just telling God that I'm ready. And then anointing came to my head and you said anointing. And I was just asking God to let his anointing shower out. And so I just want to thank God for this, for this wonderful, beautiful, powerful fast. I went on a dry fast, Amen. which was a first for me. I've never done that <laughs> before. Amen. It was, a, it was very challenging. It was so different for me, but I knew, even though I didn't know what I was fasting for and why God was calling me to this fast, I knew that he was calling me for something great. And so I knew that there was great purpose behind this. And the way that he's just revealed himself to me and the way that he showed up and showed out, I'm just so thankful to God for it. And I just want to thank you, Morgan, and your your ministry and your women who work underneath you at his daughter's closet. You guys have just been such a blessing. And I just want to thank you for your obedience and God's yeah. will. And I just want to thank God for no, his birth, his mercy for this fast for all of these women on this zoom call no 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 thank you thank you but i just want to tell you something right now i'm really i'm really gonna be looking forward to who you become because to be so young and to be truly fasting and, and ha talking about the lord like you have i've just been listening to you obviously um it reminds me of myself kind of <laughs> actually that young, you know, just like fasting and hungry. So amen, girl, keep it up. And I want to just tell you this as, cause you are young, you're very young, which is beautiful. Don't forget to live. Okay. Um, okay. Live, but live in, in, in the goodness of God, but don't forget to live because that's where your ministry and everything he calls you to do in your life, it's going to flow from your life. So don't forget to live. Okay.
Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. Now, real quick, everyone, I see your hands still up. You can keep those up. But we're going to go ahead and end out this fast. But first thing I got to tell you this. First off, breaking your fast, girl. Okay. I just want to tell you, if you are doing a water fast, you may not want to break it with a, a pizza. You may not want to break it with a cheeseburger. Okay. I'm not going to lie. It's tempting. It's tempting, girl. I know. I've been, I've been thinking about a burger myself. But if you are doing a water fast, you want to break it with something that you will enjoy, but that's not too hefty. Okay. I'm just saying, just so you won't be feeling like sick or sluggish or kind of, and you don't want to go buy no cookies. Okay. Let me tell you this. Don't go eat on them cookies yet either. Cause you're going to revert. Like your sugar went really low and then you're going to spike it all the way back up and you're going to crash or you're going to feel like you're going to have a headache or something. So I just want to tell you like, take it slow. Okay. So if you're going to eat something, eat anything you want, you can eat fruit, you can eat a salad. I'm going to break mine with a chicken salad. Amen. Um, or water. Actually, I'm going to break it with water first and then I'm going to break it with a chicken salad, but I did a dry. So if you are doing a dry fast, you can break it, but make sure you understand that in three days of not eating your internal stomach, it shrinks. So don't go to that plate thinking you can eat all that you've been eating and try to eat it on the first day because you can really make your stomach hurt and you can give yourself a lot of constipation and all that. And so it, it's just, it's not fun. So I'm just telling you now, eat until you feel satisfied. Like you're true. Like I'm truly full. Like I'm not hungry anymore, but also don't try to eat your same portions as you usually do as you've been, because three days is, is quite a bit on the stomach. Okay. And so um, eat something light. Uh, someone said I already ordered Chick-fil-A and waiting till midnight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you know, eat something light. Someone said like no dairy. I don't know. It depends on how your body does with dairy. But I want to tell you when you break your fast, you, what you have learned, girl, is that you probably don't need as much food as you've been thinking you've needed. Okay. I swear I'd be thinking I need a breakfast, lunch, a snack, a dinner, and then an evening snack. Okay. Then when you go on a fast, you're like, I don't need all that actually. I really don't. So I hopefully this right here, like I said in the sermon or in the message tonight, I said, this is the mark of something new for you. And for some of you, it, this might be the jump start to your health. You know, this really might be it. And I will say there are in, even though we fast spiritually, but I do believe that God put this together. There are so many physical benefits to fasting. There's so many, it talks, it talks about rejuvenating the cells in your body. It talks about if you have high blood pressure or um, things like that, it really rebalances your body out. Also your skin, also your hair. There are so many benefits to fasting. Um, a lot of science have scientists, also I'm a biologist. So that's why I know a lot. I'm, I'm be into this, but there are, there's something called like I'm Afro anthro. I can't get the word. And it's something about your cells. But what happens is when you fast is your body starts paying attention to the bad cells. Also, what happens with our stomachs or with the fat in our body, many times our body has pent up trauma. And that's what layers and layers of fat sometimes can be. And what happens with fasting is it actually targets all the bad areas. And so I want to tell you, don't reverse the beautiful things that you've gained, you gained in fasting. So if it's been some health benefits, let this be this jump start to your, your health journey. Let this be a jump start to you. If you've been taking care of yourself and studying a little more, I even noticed as my first time getting atrophy. Thank you, Brianna. Atro thank you. That was it. Thank you. Um, but this was my first time getting into this garden at my mom's, like the garden in probably like two months because I do it here at the office. Um, but also I noticed the garden is different. It's a different energy. It's a different, it's different. I'm not Morgan Tracy J at the garden. I'm just his daughter, you know, in the office, I'm still trying to figure things out sometimes. So I realized, oh, I need to get to the garden. So I said, okay, Lord, one day a week, instead of coming to the office, I'm going to go to the garden. Amen. So I want to pray that whatever you gained in this fast, take it with you out of it. Okay. The next thing is, like I said, remember that fasting breaks things off and you don't know it yet. You might not know what he broke off, but I want to tell you, you're going to be lighter in your spirit. Okay. You might have more of your mind is a little more clear. You feel better. You might have a little more joy. You don't know what's going on, but I want to encourage you that when you're fasting, it breaks things off of you. So make sure that you don't put new things back on you. Okay. So for example, is I broke the stick a while ago and here's the piece that I broke off. And the other piece is still on the ground. It's so on what I'm telling you is don't go back and pick it up. Don't go back and pick up 
all that, that baggage or that heaviness that you've been feeling before the fast or all that lack of clarity you did not have, but don't go back and pick it up. Okay. And also I want to tell you this three days, three days in the beginning on day one, God said, give me three days. He said, I overcame death in three days. Of course I can overcome the death, the things that look dead in your life and overcome the mountains in your life. And I want to tell you this, girl, you sacrificed, you set yourself apart, you consecrated yourself. And what that says is now you were caught, you're called, you're chosen, girl, you set apart. Okay. And you're ready for whatever God calls you to do. So I want to tell you three days ain't easy. It ain't easy, but you did it through his grace. And so to, I want to finish us out. You guys, I want to give you the biggest hand clap. Amen. I'm so proud of you ladies. And I cannot wait to see what God does through you, for you, and in your life. And you know what I already know? There are still testimonies coming in. There's testimonies coming tomorrow. There's testimonies coming this, this weekend. There's testimonies coming next week. There's testimonies coming for March. Oh, I didn't even share mine. Actually, I didn't really feel like I had a testimony during this. Like, I mean, besides God dealing with some, some things inside for sure. But um, it was so funny. I looked at one of my, I, I today I looked at a few emails and on one of our emails um, that kind of everybody gets access to, we had a speaking opportunity, an interview. And I'm like, oh, okay. Thank you, Jesus. You know, appreciate it. <laughs> you know? And then I go to this other email, which I just felt like I need to check that email. There was another speaking opportunity. And I was like, wow, okay. All right. Thank you, Jesus. And so then I go to this other email and this one, um, her name was Lisa. And I think she was like on last night was her birthday. And she said something. She said, Hey, you know, you were talking last night and I heard the Lord say, she said about your social university. She said, and he, co and, and a lot of you don't know this, but um, in 2023 social university, which is my mentorship, it went really, really low. And it's kind of what houses it and pays for everything at his daughter's closet, right? It pays for everything. And so when the numbers went really low, it really hit, put us in a little bit of a struggle boat. And so anyway, she, y'all don't know that. I don't share that openly. My team does. Amen. But like, no one really knows that. And so in her email, she was like, I first feel like I heard the Lord say like financial. See, no one knows that unless only my team and this girl's not on my team. And so I feel like God gave me a word, even in the midst of it, like, hey, your, your mentorship is, it's going to get built back up. Social University, like your heart to help, the, help women and, and show them how to use their gifts and their purpose. It's going to keep growing. Like God had to confirm that to me. Um, and so I want to tell you, no matter what, what it looks like, no matter what your testimony looks like, I want to encourage you, girl, to continue to go on this journey with God. All right. So ladies, thank you so much for joining us for the Esther Fast 2024, y'all. Okay. I cannot wait to see what God does, you guys, but I'm already going to say this. Night one of our Esther Fast, I had to hit up my events girl and I said, hey, we're at our HDC conference this year, which will, we're going to have a hundred spots. I got the, I, the night one, y'all, I got the amount of people. I got the, 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 the scripture for it. I got everything the whole purpose of it. I got it on night one of this fast and I hit her up and I was in the middle of it. I paused and I'm like, I think Rebecca was still speaking. I'm like, girl, I just got it. Oh my gosh. Like, so I want to tell you, trust the Lord, trust him, girl, trust him to the end. And amen, ladies, you have officially completed your Esther fast 2024. I hope you feel proud of yourself. I hope, I hope even if you feel like, man, I, I didn't read the Bible that much or didn't study as much as I, I hope you feel proud of yourself. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you ladies so much. Thank you for joining us. I am so happy. And Felicia, if you want to stop recording now, you're welcome to stop recording. Amen. Man, amen. 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 Thank you ladies so much. Thank you for joining. And I still have about two, four, five, seven hands up. And so I will just be grabbing you guys.